Basement Dwellers podcast is brought to you by Dynamite Shirts. Now offering several services such as screen printing, embroidery, vinyl transfer, and even decals. Visit dynamite-shirts.com and get you some sweet custom clothing today. Press start to continue. They are those who live in the shadows, who feed upon Doritos and Mountain Dew. They take comfort in their dark habitats as they watch reruns of sci-fi shows long past. They are the Basement Dwellers. Show me what you got. So say we all. So say we all. So say we all. Indeed. Yes. This is a fertile land and we will thrive. We will rule over all this land and we will call it this land. Make it so. Together, we can rule the galaxy far from sun. I want to believe. We better get back, because it'll be dark soon, and they mostly come at night. Mostly. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 8 of The Basement Dwellers, a bi-weekly podcast dedicated to all activities most enjoyed by those who spend their time in the deepest, darkest, and dankest of basements everywhere. I'm your host, Wes Tanner, and tonight we're getting a rundown of giant robot culture. Are you a robo-otaku weeb? And what the fuck does that mean anyway? Tonight on TBD. I'm joined, as always, by my fellow Basement Dwellers, Drew Tucci. And joining us for the first time since our first season, our resident giant robot expert and the weeb lord himself, Chris. What's up, guys? That's me. That is yeah. you. Yeah. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back, Chris. It has been a Thank you. It's, quite, it's the been, hi, quite the hiatus. Oh, uh, quite a long time. Yes. Zero two waifu, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so what do you, what have you, what have, Chris, what, we'll start with you. What have you been uh, up to in all this time? Oh since gosh what have i been up to um uh living being alive i yeah. mean working the uh, struggle is eating, real uh, yep. making money and uh-huh. then spending it on things that are not fun hmm. you know adult things oh adult yeah. things that sounds yeah. boring <laughs> as fuck <laughs> no you know that's what it's just said he's buying adult toys <laughs> <laughs> no those are things that are worth it yeah all right Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you for having my back. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I've been um, just living, doing, um, been playing a few different, uh, few different video games. I've uh, been getting into a couple other different shows. Nothing, nothing crazy, but you know, nothing crazy. Yeah, have you like- uh, have you have you watched the the love death and robots, Mister uh, Robot Giant Robot uh, Funny Expert? Enough, I have not yet. I need to. Uh, oh, I've, seen the, I've seen the trailer for it. And I've seen the the thing on Netflix, and I'm like, ah, oh, that that seems like right up my alley. Plus, I heard that there's like Robo boobies in it, and I'm, that's pretty sweet. I am only on epi- on, the, on the third episode, and I'm in love. Like the animation, nice. the animation style is fantastic. It reminds me a lot of um, uh, uh, Into the Spider Verse, the, the Spider Man movie that came out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, at least one of the episodes I'm watching right now, it looks like they like transposed, or I don't know if that's the right word, but they. Yeah, like, it's almost like that digital almost yeah. look. Well, it's like it looks like they like did a lot of motion capture, but made it animated but anyway um yeah the second there's a second episode in there oh wait yeah se- the, the second episode in the i guess you call it an anthology maybe i don't know but okay. the second episode in there's about robots and i laughed my ass off the entire time um nice. but yeah tucci have you seen it yet 
Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, you guys were talking about it, and I was getting interested. So be interested. Keep talking about it. It's yeah. great, Drew. What well, about what you? Love. I don't have Netflix right now. Oh, okay. Ooh. Uh, Love, right. Death, and Robots, Tucci. Dude. That's what it's called. Love, Death, and Robot. Okay, yeah, Drew, did you did this. you get rid of Netflix but keep your WWE? WWE? Hell yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there is literally nothing on Netflix right now that I want to watch. I want to watch one thing. I got to watch the last episode of um, Umbrella Academy. Hmm. Okay. I don't feel like paying 12 bucks to watch one episode of something. I, I don't blame you. I guess that's fair. I have like the reverse problem. I have literally an infinity amount of shows that I have in my queue and get overwhelmed with them. And I'm like, I guess I just won't watch anything. I got nothing to watch. <laughs> do you do? Oh, like I watch, I use Hulu more than I do, do Netflix. I like Hulu more. Okay. Mm. Last theme. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I'm burning hell like everyone else. No, I mean, there's definitely a lot of stuff on Hulu that is not on Netflix. I mean, there's a ton of like anime, other animated shows. Yeah. Uh, well, I like it because it's it's got uh, like all the network shows and stuff. Yeah. And uh, that way, I don't have to have cable. Yeah, booty yeah. cable. I haven't who, had cable. Who has cable anyway? Four cables and a half for years. old people. Let's be real. I was gonna say old people. <laughs> C- <laughs> cables for people who don't know how to internet. <laughs> yeah. Ba- basically, yeah. like my parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so before two things before we uh, move on tonight, guys, um, we're going to uh, to start off by by wishing our very own boots Lauren a happy birthday. It was her birthday yesterday. Oh so, shit! Um, oh yeah, shit! Happy, happy birthday, birthday to Boots! Birthday to um, you! Cha cha cha! To you! Keep going! Cha cha cha! Keep going! Birthday! Keep Dear going. Dory Boots person. <laughs> yeah. Right. Happy birthday. <laughs> Boots person. <laughs> Boots, we hope well, you feel... Sure was a thing. <laughs> we, we hope you feel yeah. very special after that performance. Yeah. Um, you better special to us. <laughs> and and uh, secondly, um, we have uh, coming up for, uh, next weekend... The 30th of March is the next installment of the One Shot Adventurers Guild. Uh, we are going to be the live sim- or live streaming on Twitch, which you can find our Twitch channel at www.twitch.tv slash tbdpod. Follow us and come hang out with us on game day as we start part two of the Lost Mine of Fandelver, which is the adventure module that comes with the fifth edition starter edition. Hell yeah. yeah. So that should be fun. I Maybe. believe we are starting funny at enough, six. I don't pl- remember anything we've done in that game. <laughs> well, <laughs> funny enough, you can find <laughs> you can find our previous ep- <laughs> previous episodes on our YouTube channel, which unfortunately we don't have a, a snazzy URL for that yet because hardly anybody follows us. But if you really want to, you can go and search the the basement dwellers podcast. Not just the basement dwellers or just basement dwellers. You'll come up with a whole bunch of shit that way. But the basement dwellers podcast, we are one of the first results and uh, you can subscribe to that. That's where we will archive our, our video stuff. And we, you can also find um, sometime in the future. I'll be uploading our, uh, our past and previous episodes uh, to that as well. Um, if Thank YouTube you. for some reason is your, your chosen platform to listen to podcasts. Um, it's not mine, but uh, we will accommodate anyone, I suppose. Um, <laughs> that so was a great <laughs> unintentional segue there. That think, was, no, that was perfect. That yeah. was so good. Okay, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, push my luck here. So we'll go ahead and cut to commercial break, and when we get back, Chris is going to launch into uh, robots and. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't really know how to introduce it. So, uh, yeah, stick with us. We'll be back in, in just a second. What's up, everybody? JJ here. I'm a super nostalgic person, and one of the things that has given me so many memories over the years has been my experiences with video games. I mean, sure, I like hearing reviews, watching Let's Plays, and getting news about the latest releases, but what I really love is hearing about how gaming has affected people on a personal level. That's why I decided to start my own YouTube channel. Game Room Revival. I talk not only about games I love, but why I love them so much, and what they've meant to me over the years. I'm a retro game collector, and the games that mean the most to me are the ones that have great memories attached to them. So, 
If you're like me and have a passion for talking and hearing about how games have affected people personally, I invite you to come check out my YouTube channel, Game Room Revival. Thanks. And now, back to the basement. You just explode. <laughs> and God bless the 21st century. <laughs> the miracle of modern science. Let's hope we didn't want to keep that private because we are now back. And uh, we are going to be talking with Chris, or I should say he's going to be talking at us about mm. giant robot culture. Chris, is there a word for this that I'm just is escaping me? Is there sure, a like word that sensual, that encapsulates uh, erotic? No, it, uh, <laughs> the best way to describe it would just be uh, mecha. So mecha, uh, we spell it M E C H A, uh, but the I Japanese spell it that word, way too, right? But uh, funny enough, mecha is. Oh, you mean we as in English people? Yeah, we okay. as in English people English speaking. Um, <sighs> Sorry, I didn't mean to trip you up. No, no, you're fine. So, um, <laughs> true. <laughs> I can't say that one out loud. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. It's all right. That one's just for the Patreon <laughs> subscriber. That, no, one, that really one's just for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so just the, the mecha genre. I mean, giant robots is kind of a, a sub genre of that. Okay. Uh, you know, mecha could just be, it's just short for uh, mechanical. Uh, okay. it kind of is, it is one of the oldest robot. Uh, or the oldest genres, uh, not just in anime, but in live action and other entertainment. Uh, n- you know, it kind of got its roots in, um, you know, Japanese anime uh, and a few other things like that. But it has definitely become more of a widespread international uh, thing. I mean, a good example for um, more Americanized versions of this. Uh, would be more recently like the Pacific Rim movies. Yeah, I mean, that is a that's a great love letter uh, to the mecha genre and giant robot battles in general. Uh, if you want to go back in time a little bit for some of our older listeners, uh, you could go to Robot Jocks. It's kind of a terrible movie, but Robot Jocks, fantastic special effects. Um, it's basically set in a future time where there's no wars, but. <laughs> We figure out who's going to be the leader of of the free world for the next X amount of years through giant combat, robot combat. Wow. Combat, robot combat. That sounds awesome. It does sound awesome. It's it's a great premise. The movie is bad. I'm not. (laughs) It's like it's like the cult movie bad. Like it's still an entertaining movie, Um, but the story is bad. (laughs) Bad. That sounds like. That sounds like it's just up our alley, then. Oh, you would yeah. love it. Germany's so, the bad guy. Oh, just Germany. Oh, Germany. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's it's... pretty part and parcel for the 20th century. So. Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> was. <laughs> uh, there was another movie in the same vein called, like, Robot Wars. Um, funny that enough. A TV okay. show? No, uh, I think that was something else, but this was just a whole nother, uh, whole nother movie. Um, but yeah, so let's start with just giant robots in general, right? Yes. So the giant robot genre or mecha genre can be kind of classified in the two different ways, right? So it's all science fiction, but you got the more real science fiction in your more like, I'll use Star Trek and Star Wars as kind of like an analogy here. So okay. specific rem go with it too. Yeah. Um, so Pacific Rim, I would think is kind of on that straddle of they use real world science in quotation Mm -hmm. marks to explain things. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But you still have to have an air of disbelief of how is this 50 meter tall robot not like collapsing under its own weight? Right. Because a flux capacitor is still a flux capacitor. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I gotcha. (laughs) But then you can have the complete opposite side of that and they're more like they just work they just do it you know they're they're magical in nature uh they're um you know super science that they're like oh yeah no this is just the uh what we d- designed to be able to stop the giant ro- uh, giant uh, monsters from attacking uh our home planet from space um so that type of show would be more like um the anime Escaflone. okay uh, i was really hoping you were going to say darling in the franks 
Oh, that's a, I have not actually gotten a chance uh, to watch it. O2 is waifu, bro. Zero two is. is waifu. I know. She's, she's great. She's so nice, darling. Hashtag would marry. Yeah. Um, but yes, that's that's another great show. Um, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> not a fucking clue. We're, we're just weaving out. Let us yeah, leave, okay? No, go for it. So, no judgment here, man. Do you? Not at all. Yeah, right. We're, we're really delving into basement dweller territory with this one, so oh, it's it's about yeah. about time, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let, let's start with the more uh, real world militaristic side of uh, Mecha Jump. So most of these type of shows have to deal with some kind of conflict. Well, either that be uh, nations fighting each other, us defending ourselves against uh, you know alien threats, things of that nature. Um, so uh, when you think of giant robots, a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, the Gundam, that's a franchise mm-hmm. uh, that's mm-hmm. been around since the, uh, the late 70s. Robotech. Honestly, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the that would be more like the military side of things. Yeah, yeah. you know that's that's definitely a, an Americanized um, version of that, and that's that's another interesting point where the difference between like Eastern Mecca and Western Mecca, Eastern Mecca look more humanoid, right? You have more defined proportions, uh, more humanistic characteristics, whereas in Western culture, they're more like bipedal tanks. Ah. Um, like the Metal Gear, for instance, yeah. from like um, the the Metal Gear Solid games. Um, I that is replate that. So no, oh well. No. There's a yeah. giant robot in there that can shoot nukes. No um, shit. The, <laughs> like mech, mech warrior and stuff like that, where you're like yeah, the pilot, but you're okay. piloting like a walking tank, like you said. Yeah, they're very Sweet. slow and methodical, and um, you know it's definitely a slower combat. Where in more Eastern shows, uh, more Japanese. Um, influence shows you know their their uh giant robots move more human like or more fluid can do karate kicks and you know backflips <laughs> and stuff like that yeah so like you gundam know. and stuff yeah like that's gundam more. um what's the one that we used to watch when you you got all of us obsessed with it for the longest time gundam uh, wing no 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 uh it was, was it, uh, they were, I, maybe, I'm, maybe it wasn't robots, but it was a, uh, um, yeah, I don't think it was robots. So never mind. It was the something samurai, like they oh, all had. That's, that's Ronin warriors. Ronin my warriors. Friend. That's, not, not that's robots. Oh, oh, not, dude, those are fucking <laughs> awesome. Not robots. Oh, man. They yeah. had the most badass toys. Yeah, they did. Okay. I was wrong, wrong vein. <laughs> but, but funny yeah. enough, still taking a lot of influences. So yeah, um, then maybe that's why know, I, maybe that's why it popped into my head. But right? <laughs> well, that's cool because the samurai motif from that anime uh, and show, you know, that kind of reflects a lot of other giant robot motifs as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Gundam that takes a lot of inspirations from samurai. Um you know, we also start getting into the the difference between the militaristic side. So, like your your Gundams, where it's about war, uh, you know, battle tech, mech warrior stuff like that. Did you guys you ever play uh, LA Future Cop LAPD back on the PlayStation One? Uh, this sounds familiar, no. but no, just me. Okay, go ahead, continue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, <it's> <laughs> right. So you've got that side, mm-hmm. but then you start getting into more of the more fantasy based things the super robot genre right so these are things that pacific rim is a little bit more closer to Mm -hmm. where you've got robots that are so big that they don't make sense but they still work Mm -hmm. uh this would also be in the vein of like voltron would be another popular power rangers power rangers yeah that's that's another good um you know subset of that where they've got multiple vehicles combining into one massive robot to fight a monster of the week. Um, another great show for this would be uh, Mazinger. That's another set of shows. That's kind of the uh, more brutal side of uh, of anime where you're like, oh yeah, that robot just got cut in half and there's a bunch of like like fake blood and all that. Oil blood. You know, all, all anime um, animated there, so uh, let's see. What's another? What's another great show I love? Oh, The Legend of Daikumaru uh, Gai King. Oh, that's a great one. 
I know. <laughs> it's the most. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh at you. Yeah. I know. No, it's fun. <laughs> laugh away. Uh, no. But I'm gonna. I'd like to make up a list of these, and I'll actually see if we can post them uh, with the. Uh, when the show goes live, I don't know if that's something you can look at when oh, yeah. uh, it goes. Whatever. If you cool. get, if you give me the list, I try and uh, our the shows are a lot easier for me to to pump out as far as editing and uploading now than they used to be. So, um, get it to me by by Thursday, maybe. Oh yeah, no, I'd yeah. probably get it to you by tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, these shows are more about or less about the mechanics of the how the suit works and more about the pilot and his fighting spirit or his his uh relationships with uh the other people in the show uh you know the that that fire that fighting spirit um the other cool shows that could go with that would be um oh, let me just bring up a list 80s mecha anime. Oh, the best. <laughs> All right, real quick, Chris, before you go yeah. into that. Yeah. Why do you like giant robots so much? Oh, man. Why do I like giant robots? Yeah, we'll break we'll break this up for a second. Yeah, yeah. Ask why? me questions. That I was like asking why is the sky blue and the grass green? I just want to know like what it is <laughs> that really gets Chris going about giant robots. Because I like you know, them too, but not anywhere close to the way you do. Right. So for me, I think I enjoy giant robot shows because it, it it's that side of animation or fantasy that is just so absurd that, you know, it, it takes me out of real life. Right. Like, yep. we're, like we're working towards having like mecha suits in real life, you know, on a smaller scale. Yeah. But, you know, the That's idea that. that yeah, right. The the idea that we can have something so fantastical and have you know great storytelling along with you know I, I just like robots. I think that's what it really comes down <laughs> to. You know, I, yeah. I really enjoy uh mechanical side of things. I like um just the larger in life nature of it. You know, a, a lot of these shows, you know, they're, they're, some of them are more geared towards children, right? They, they're kids shows. Um, but they still have adult themes and they still have mature themes to them where like, you know, if you, if you try really hard to help protect your friends, you know, you're going to, you know, be a better person, be stronger. And that is kind of a, a lot of what a lot of these shows do. They kind of go through the, um, the the hero's tale. I mean, like Star Wars. Yeah. You know, like you have the farm boy kid who discovers the power that goes on the journey to be a better person. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of that uh, stuff happens. You know, with varying themes. I mean, um, you know, to go back to uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, that's a super popular one that's still going on today. You know, that that trope started with. Oh, th- this fifteen-year-old kid found the keys to this giant robot and is now piloting it. Like that—that's kind of how a lot of these shows start. That's how it started. Yeah, I mean that. Dang, like, I'm have to yeah, you know, it was like, oh, there's a, this big war, and um, you know, the the main character Amuro Ray was trying to get into a shelter, and he's like, oh man, I need to do something and protect these people. Oh, there's this new experimental mobile suit that just happens to be going by. Oh, I found the instruction manual uh, lying outside of it. I'm going to read through it real quick and turn this thing on and then defeat these two enemies that are here. I mean, that's like the first episode. And then it, you know, it evolves from there and goes on from there and talks more about the war conflict uh, between the two different factions, you know, the Earth Federation and the Zeon, uh, the Principality of Zeon. And it's kind of an allegory for um world war ii in a way okay where uh the federation is more like you know the united states and britain fighting a uh regime with a lot of nazi-ish tendencies uh you know very <laughs> like oh yeah we we space noids that's the bad guy like quote unquote bad guys for that particular show 
uh, you know, people of Zeon, like, we just want to be free. Oh, by the way, we're the superior next evolution. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I mean, I like it. I said, on a, on a base level, these shows are robots fighting other robots. Yeah. But when you really dig into the story and you dig into, you know, kind of everything that it's based around, you see a lot more, hey, this is a parallel between, you know, real life and history. Yeah. If that makes sense. That does make sense. And awesome. I would have to, all my experience with watching the giant robot genre, like Gundam and everything, I would have to actually go through and pay attention. It was very sporadic. And I think that was mainly due to, it would only be when I was around you that I watched that stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> No, for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know. When right now, especially with the um, you know the way the internet works, and you know a lot of other streaming services like Hulu and Netflix, and uh, heck, even uh, Amazon Prime, they've got mecha shows on there. That sounds like you know? a robot in itself. Yeah, right. Amazon, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really does. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? And so, like, like I said. What I love about these shows is one, there's robots. I like mm -hmm. robots. Robots are fun. Two, the stories that are behind them, because it's not most of the time it's not, oh hey, look at this robot. It's just fighting these other monsters or fighting these other robots. You know, there's they're just a tool, much like in a like a military film, like Dunkirk, I think it was. Like that was about a tank crew. In their relationship, am I thinking of the right movie? Uh, You're thinking Dun of Fury. Yeah, Fury. Thank you. Yep, my bad. Yeah, so Fury, like that was the relationships between all the different people inside mm -hmm. of that tank. Yeah, you know, and it's it's very similar to a lot of these other shows. You know. Yeah, I yeah. get it, man. That was a crazy movie. That was a that was a movie. great movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I still haven't seen Dunkirk. Now that you brought it up, but that that's. Uh, World War That's the one. one on the beachhead, right? No, yeah. Dunkirk's World War Two. Yeah, is it Dunkirk? Yeah, I'm yep. pretty sure it's World War Two. Oh, does it take place with the the British then? Or yep. Okay, I was gonna say because the helmets looked like uh, the wide brim helmets. Those aren't. Uh... <clears throat> you know how England is; they like to hold on to shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that my fiance is British. Yeah, okay, fair. I have a pass. You're gonna get right? it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the blaspheme against the crown passes out. <laughs> hey, she's immigrating here. I'm not immigrating there. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Anyway. So, back what, to what are some questions that you guys have that I might be able to to answer here? Like, what? Um, if there's any show that you've seen or have wanted to see, what's the most real mecha? show you've seen or movie whichever like so, most based in reality yeah most based in okay. reality yeah hmm i would say stumped you first question <laughs> first question hey right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, guys ask me questions hey what, what about this right Fuck, yes, it's like question. not that question <laughs> dang it, dang it. you right? son no. of a bitch so, i would say Probably the most. Um, you guys still there? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. The peep stuff booped, and I was like, "Oh crap!" That's just the. the oh, robots. that's because it's the robots. Yep. Um, We're used to yeah. it. <laughs> so I would say the most the most realistic uh, mecha anime that I've seen is probably, I mean. Ghost in the Shell to some point, um, just because that's that's kind of that is technically in the mecha genre, but it okay. um, that's just not uh, that's just not. It's not like uh, super robot. It's not giant robot. It's just uh, you said you the the mecha genre is just anything mechanical. All right, I have my question. When you're done answering this one, go ahead. Yeah, so I would say that, but if you're gonna go into more of the giant robot side of things, um, the most realistic would probably. Be. Oh, 
man, that one is a tough one. <laughs> hey, I ask hard hitting questions. I yeah. should be a journalist. Yeah, you should be. Uh, <laughs> the hardest thing to go with that is the fact that a lot of mecha shows don't deal with. There, a lot of them are probably like giant robot versus monster. So uh, honestly, I would say the Gundam universe. Okay. Like, the Gundam series of shows. So there's the there's the the Universal Century, which is like the main timeline, and then there's the alternate universe ones where they decided to branch out and try different storylines. Right. Okay. So the Universal Century, like I was talking about earlier, that's the uh, it takes place in our solar system. Um, you know, Earth, its surrounding planets. Um, mainly to deal with uh, the struggle between the planet Earth and the Earth Federation and the outlying space colonies that um, aren't treated the best. You know, they're overtaxed, they're overworked, they're expected to do these things for the elite people of Earth who live on the planet. You know, the population had gotten so big that, you know, they, they decided, oh, let's expand out into space. So... You know, originally it started out peaceful, you know, much like the, the allegory that we have kind of now in some things, you know, it's, hey, we just want to be treated equally and fair. And, you know, things were going well until someone decided to be an extremist in <laughs> one way or the other. And then a war broke out. You and, usually do be like that, too. Right. You know, yeah. it, the first series um, takes place in a time called the one year war. And at this point, when the story starts in Gundam, it's probably six months in. Half the population of the Earth and the colonies has been killed. I mean, like... Oh, too like, bad for well, the cannibals. Right? Like, six billion people are just gone. Mm. Right? Because of, you know, mass war with these new mobile suits, people using nuclear weapons, dropping colonies onto the Earth. Oh. Like... like um, Australia doesn't exist anymore. In, well, that's okay. That, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I do love Australia. Australian <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, they, they, yeah. they drop a, a Zeon drops a colony on Earth, and that's when they went, oh shit, we all went too far. <laughs> We've gone too far. <laughs> let's let's um, not use weapons of mass destruction anymore. Yeah. Um, huh. I'm going to go ahead and pause you right there. We're going to go ahead and take our second commercial break. And when we get back, more of the same, guys. So stick with us. We will be back again. <laughs> hey, do you want to play games for a good cause? Join Extra Life, a community of 50,000 gamers all over the world who play games to heal kids at Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Find out more at extra-life.org. If you crave something different, if you want to listen to something new, then you need to listen to Wasteland Public Radio. What do we have? Well, we've got everything. And we're in the wasteland. And we've got these guys. So stop on by wastelandpublicradio.com. That's wastelandpublicradio.com. Do you dream of the end of the world? Do you suffer from swollen mood, inflamed distemper, or sore mutation? Then Tomorrow's End is the pseudoscience remedy you are looking for. Listening to Tomorrow's End is proven to relieve all your post-apocalyptic desires. Listen today at Tomorrow's End at RPGStuff.net or find us on Facebook, iTunes, Google Play, or your nearest Raiders group. The people what they want. Give, More questions. Give them Weaves. what they want. Um, so, Chris, you, we left off before the commercial talking a little bit about, about Gundam. I wanted to ask you what you thought about the new live-action Gundam movie coming out or being developed right now. Oh if, yes. Yeah. Are you excited about it? Are you nervous I, or no, I, a little bit of both? You're so not, we you're can, not really one to shit on movies. Are you? I mean, not like the rest if of it's, us. If it's a legit, terrible movie, then well, yeah, but I, re I remember I, I always give something a chance. I remember your overwhelming positivity when we decided to go see the, uh, um, the GI Joe, Joe movie. You're like, <laughs> you're, you're like, you're like bear, it, yeah, like, you know what? <laughs> if, if we don't walk out of the theater, it's going to be a good movie. And you know what? It was. It was all right. I, I, we, I was entertained. Yeah. I was entertained. So so what do you think about the movie? I, I don't know anything about it, but um, 
Do you think they're headed in the right direction from what you know? Or are you just you know, more just from, kind of waiting to see what they come out with before you judge well, it? Well, the, the guy that they have, um, I think, writing the movie uh-huh. is, uh, I forget, I'm just Googling it real quick. I uh, do that all Ryan the time. Cade I give Vaughn. Uh, or, Sorry. Yeah, Vaughn is his name. So he, uh, what did he write? Uh, da, da, da. Well, one, it's being made by Legendary Films who did Pacific Rim. Yeah. So, I mean, that's already, like, they have kind of that know-how behind it. Yeah. And then uh, he's also, the guy who's um writer has been doing a lot of um, comics. Okay. Um, for a lot of stuff, though, uh, Why the Last Man and Saga. I don't know if you guys know what those comics are. Mm-hmm. I mean, but, um, I don't know saga sounds like it could be anything but <laughs> it's it's kind of like a sci-fi um thing uh, that's got a, some fairly decent writing in it <laughs> isn't saga like fairy taley uh i think it's it's more um no it's not i'm thinking of something different yeah i'm thinking of um yo know, <laughs> well, then yes, I do know. <laughs> yeah, uh, what was, what I, uh, was the guy's name we were talking about, though? What's his name again? Brian K. Vaughn. Like Brian v- K. Vaughn. Yeah, V A U G H A N. He's a comic writer, isn't he? Big, big comic yeah. writer. Yeah, he writes. Yeah. For, uh, he also worked on uh, Under the Dome, that TV show. Oh, uh, uh, is that the one where the whole town gets trapped in a yeah. uh, force field that they can't explain? Yeah. That was okay. Oh, that yeah. was okay. I worked on that, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it was kind of hit or miss. Um, yeah, I thought but, it was a cool concept. Yeah, yeah me too. Definitely, yeah. So, no, I'm I'm really excited for it. You know, okay. it's like I said, it's being made by Legendary Entertainment, so they they have they, they know what they're doing. Plus, it's it's um it's being worked on closely by Sunrise, who are the the, the it's the original animation studio. Uh, that did Gundam way back in the day. Oh. Uh, you know, they're, it's owned by Bandai. So they uh, got now. some. They got some OG nerds working on that one, huh? Yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Um, right. you know, the, the other. The other interesting fun fact is this is actually going to be the second live action Gundam movie. The first oh one. shit! <laughs> the, first one is, the, the first one is garbage. Is it? Uh, <laughs> it's, so first of all, it's like it's almost like. Have you ever watched like a made for Canadian TV uh, film? Made for Canadian TV? Is that like actually, is that like yeah. a step down from just made from TV? Yeah, like Degrassi. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen Degrassi. Yeah, that, that Degrassi. Exactly, that, that is exactly. The, the, that is by far the best way to put it, too. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the the first Gundam show was a uh, movie supposed to be like the live action one was supposed to be like the twentieth anniversary of Gundam celebrating that. Okay. And, so, so it's like CW, but with like. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's wow. you know I will, I will say the animation is uh, okay for like a two thousand like twos like like it was like the 25th anniversary oh, that, uh, was two, that was 2000s yeah. it came out yeah <laughs> yeah so um yeah it, it's it's uh i mean it's definitely worth a watch just to kind of be a completionist and like see where <laughs> things go um i actually recently got done watching uh re-watching i should say all of the original universal century shows and movies for Gundam, uh, for Mobile Suit Gundam. Mm. Uh, so it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, like nine or ten um, different anime. Wow. Uh, in their shows. Some of them are U- uh, uh, OVAs, so they're only like six to 13 episodes long. Um, what does OVA but, stand for, real quick? Uh, original animation video, I believe. Or um, original video animation OVA. Yeah, oh, OVA. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, I dyslexia. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, okay. um, it's it's definitely worth um, worth doing if you really want to get into the back background and lore, and that's not even including some of the other offshoot, uh, like 
universal century things that kind of explain and tell other sides that um, Bandai uh, Entertainment has come out with. But just the base story, and I'll, I'll have a list of that um, with the show notes as well, kind of where to start with uh, Gundam and uh, where to go through from there. Because I think that's probably my, it's in my top three favorite mecha um, animes of all so time. What 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 is your, your favorite, what is, what is your favorite mecha I don't know what's it like. Okay, what is your favorite mecha? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't okay. know if I should say show, uh, movie, or or uh, well, series, or what. But what's your favorite? Uh, what do you? What's your go to? Oh my gosh! So I will always geek out about. See, this is the problem because I love everything. Yeah, like <laughs> everything in the world. So you do. You're very. You're uh, very a great way to live life. Love though, everything either. in the world. Type yeah, of I, I like everything on Facebook. I like every like I put everything on Tumblr. <laughs> yes, I you mean, do. It's just how <laughs> every every life every message TV. every message in in uh, Facebook Messenger is met with the thumbs up from you. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say, okay, I'll tell you what. I will pick my top. I'll pick my top four shows in different kind of sub genres of mecha. Wow. Um, but first, are there any other questions that like shows or like, Hey, describe uh, a, a genre or scenario. And I could probably tell you a show to, that would follow <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> um, let me think here. Yeah. I think I, I've, I've, my questions have kind of come up as, as you've said other things. So I don't know if I have any, like, that I've been dying oh. to ask. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. How, how I, I don't know enough I, about I, I it. I got one. I got one. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Dom, like, like dominatrix stuff. Ooh. Um, Whoa. that, <laughs> what? Well, here's, the here's the thing. What there the fuck are, did we just get stuff. into? What? I was just curious. <laughs> no, he, I, said I, he, he said he could come up with anything. So I was no, like, no, right. what's the most obscure thing I could think okay. of? Okay. All, right. All right. So All right. here's All the right. thing. Some some shows, like some <laughs> other genres of shows, like let's say uh, more fan shows. Uh -huh. There are some mecha shows that have fan service. In fact, there's quite a quite a few. Right. All right. So all right, real quick, real, hold yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, For yeah. those who don't know, I do know. Explain fan service. <laughs> so, fan service is when, and it's not necessarily an erotic thing. Sometimes they use that term as like a, "Hey, we're we're pander, not pander, but we're like." Oh, I guess pandering is the only word. Pandering is yeah. a very good word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pandering <laughs> to the <laughs> suspected demographic that would be watching this show. So that's why in some anime you see, oh man, look at that beautiful schoolgirl who's got those huge breasts and wide hips. It's wonderful. Or anime for the ladies where you've got that like, oh, that guy's so cool and he's got glasses. I love glasses. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's the answer to this. I love, I love it. For the dudes, it's like, look at that big titty schoolgirl. Yeah. And for the women, it's like, look at that hunky nerd. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those are very like very niche things. I mean, I'm sure that the guys are like, oh, look at that like really nerdy girl. Oh, that's my thing. And then there might be some girls who are like, oh, look at that skinny little boy that I just want to protect. Oh, and geez. Dudes like Tucci who are like, look at all those tentacles. Yeah, consenticles. These, this is a thing. Yeah, consenticles. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a very consensual person. We, we, <laughs> we, we, I, I only we, get off on of that, that involve consent. Okay? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and Dom and Dom yeah, involves a lot of consent. We did. Well, okay. Thanks for thanks for bringing it back, Tucci. Continue, yeah, Chris. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, so anyway, there's a lot of different fan service things, and there's actually a. Uh, um, NECA show that uh, pops up to mind. Uh, I forget the actual name. NECA anime. <laughs> I should have had this list already, like ready to go. It's okay. But a lot of a lot of more recent anime has definitely thrown a lot more uh, fan servicey kind of etchy things into it. Um, just to kind of like draw in more people and yeah. appeal to certain things. I mean, it, it's hitting multiple demographics. Um, so I would say oh, that show 
There's there's a show where the mecha's power is based on how horny the pilot is. Oh, God. And <laughs> it's, it's actually recent, pretty recent. Uh, I mean, it sounds like Darlene the Franks, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty I mean, close to that shit. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. Like I said, I still got a... Uh, Still got to watch that. Oh, you, you, you'll get it as soon as soon as you see how they operate those mecha. You'll be like, I know exactly what <laughs> oh, yeah, you're I've, talking about. I've seen, I've seen the pictures and I've seen some of the videos. And oh, I'm, yeah. I hold on to then her. You know. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, um, God damn it. Anyway, we're reaching, like, reaching uh, new uh, levels tonight. The bad guys are all like horny men in like penguin suits. Uh, but <laughs> that, that, that's it. <laughs> We're, we're all like married men or show has gone off the married and, and we're all anime's just like fucking weird this is, getting, this is getting iffy <laughs> this show has gone off the fucking rails yeah uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll find it i'll find boots it. where are you <laughs> help us help us <laughs> <laughs> But, but, so okay, so, you've sent Chris on a mission right now, did you? I am. I will find it. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much of that time. Anyway, no, so okay. but like I said, there can be other other sub genres within Mecca. So Escaflone <clears throat> would be kind of a. It would be a, like a fantasy, like D and D type anime, but there's giant robots that fight each other. Very fantasy based. Um, you know, they, they use the heart of a dragon to power the mech. Um, that's one that. I've never, I've never seen before. Yeah, no, I, I've got it on a on DVD vision of Escaflone is what you want to look up, okay. uh, but I'm sure you can find it on uh, either streaming service or be the, the internet pirates that I know that some of our listeners probably are. They could probably find it. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> So what about but, uh, 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 Neon Genesis? That I feel like that has giant robots in it. Am it right? does have giant robots in it, and yeah. that's kind of the um, that's one of those shows that either is confusing, it's fucking beautiful, and love it, or it's pretentious as shit. I yeah, right? I remember it being pretty pretentious. I remember and thinking I- that before I knew what pretentious meant. Like, like, like it just, <laughs> I didn't know how to for describe those, it. For those that don't know, go ahead and uh, describe that word for us. Pretentious? Yeah. Or are you it's testing you- my vocabulary? It just means like yeah. very, very arrogant and very like you have an air of, of uh, being above others or being yeah, specifically works. tailored towards people of a higher intellect and higher standing. How's that? How's that for le, a definition? Le, le big brain. See, I, I listen to audiobooks now. Like, <laughs> I listen to the words being spoken yeah. at me. So My vocabulary has brains increased brains a little bit. Some people pump their brains full of books. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, no, like, like uh, Genesis, it, it, it is a good, it's a good anime. But it is not, to me anyway, my opinion, and I know there are some that, like, it is the show. I know Nick um, really likes it. Uh, that's why I wish he was on tonight. I'm Escaflone? Yeah. So no, uh, Neon Genesis there. Oh, jeez, yeah, I know. Uh, He's always, always ranting about that one. Yeah, so, but no, it, it's definitely, it is a good show. But there are certain things in there, like, there's a lot of Christian iconography and, like, things that they talk about, and then they're like, the creators were like, "Oh yeah, we just we don't understand what any of this actually means." And we just thought, <laughs> it looked cool, so we thought we'd throw it in. It sounds With deep. Our, yeah, an- it, we'll call the bad guys angels. That sounds. It sounds ironic. deep. Throw it in. <laughs> yeah, um, that is ironic, isn't it? Right? Yeah, you know. So, uh, but yeah, like there, there's all kinds of genres. I mean, you know, there there are shows where, um, you know, it's very it has a very serious tone, like Gundam. Yeah. Uh, and um, Escaflone, Neon Genesis. But then you have a lot of uh, giant robot shows that are more, you know, meant for younger audiences. They have more, um, like, Pratt Falls. They're more co- uh, comedic, comedy-based. Uh, that uh, the Guy King show I was talking about earlier, uh, you know, that, that has a lot of uh, younger kid uh mentality i mean the main the main character is a younger kid searching for his father and has happened to be taken to another world that is inside of our like world 
Mm-hmm. And he has the, the fire of courage and can po- like use that power to pilot this ancient mech. Uh, and it's awesome. It brings out your inner seven year old. Right. Um, what, what, what would you consider to be like the most accessible mecha genre, uh, movie show series, whatever, um, like well, what, what's the, what's the, what's the, uh, like if I were to sit down and want to not really think about what's going on, but want to just enjoy some very, very graphic, uh, robot carnage, what would, it, what oh. would I go to? Nice. So I would suggest definitely the Pacific Rim movies. Um, oh, yeah. they, they have their flaws, right? Like some people they're like the writing can be whatever. Mm. Uh, but for just a entertaining, like set of movies that explains literally everything and you don't have to like dig deep into the lore you know that is definitely uh, the two movies that I think you could watch back to back and be like sweet giant robots look pretty sweet this is a good way to jump in mm-hmm. okay all right um, so those are relatively new like what yeah. what's what was uh what are some older stuff like older what, what's stuff. what's more established Cars. Cars? <laughs> cars, cars. Yeah, that, that, there's a wipeout scene in the first movie, and that's yeah. pretty graphic. You know? Oh, okay. He's like, uh, um, yeah. No, uh, Did you would say cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'm just trying to be me, man. That's yeah, all. That's all right. I no, wouldn't I have it any think, other way. Right. I think um, a great, another great way would be to maybe not a specific show, but I would say like Google uh, mecha shows and look at what the robot looks like Uh and then say, you know what? I like the way that looks. Uh I like, I like the curve of those lines. I like the way that that. (laughs) (laughs) I like the curve of them lines. I like them curvy lines. Um, Yeah. So I would say for um, a little bit older, uh, you could go with uh, Gurren Lagan. That's a great, uh, just like, 25 26 episode anime that has a is just epic throughout the entire thing it's got a lot of good comedy it's got serious points uh you know there's you're not gonna get bogged down by what's happening Hmm, okay um i think if you want to go a little bit older than that uh i would go for if you wanted to get into the gundam stuff okay uh i would say uh mobile suit gundam eighth ms team is another great uh show it's an ova it's only 12 episodes long so many weird titles for this stuff i know there, there can be um but uh that show is one of my favorites because it's like a snapshot of uh the ground war on earth uh with the uh, Earth Federation versus the ground troops of Xeon. And it's a very close parallel to like the Asian Pacific, like battle front. Okay. You know, a lot of things are happening in the jungle and it's about a small squad people who, you know, they happen to pilot mobile suits and giant robots, but it's about the struggles of war and, you know, finding relationships with the enemy and being like what's the point of us fighting we're just people you know guerrilla warfare happening with the indigenous people who they're just caught up in the middle of it and they don't like either side Mm -hmm. just a good respect that good all-around story yeah all right um i would say i have one more okay two more I have two more. <laughs> Sorry, so, I, uh, I have a, I have a question here, and depending on what you say, I'll be surprised. Go ahead. Okay, so my, my last two uh, picks. Okay, one actually uh, is technically three different uh, shows, mecha shows uh-huh. that were combined into one. I'm sure you've all heard of Robotech. Yes. Nope. No, we just oh, mentioned it not. earlier in the show. Yeah. Well, like, besides here, I haven't. <laughs> okay. So, so all right. So, Robotech was a show in the '80s that was the the company Harmony Gold got the rights to three different uh, 
robot animes that were like you know 20 30 episodes long whatever and they were so similar to each other that they edited some stuff americanized a few things and basically made it in enough episodes to be serialized um that's what we do here in america we take things that have already been done and make them better yeah right? <laughs> yeah um but i would definitely recommend you can actually stream Robotech on all the major streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. Um, you know, at least the first section of that show. Uh, okay. I'd say the first 25 or 26. The, basically, the Macross Saga is what it's called. That's like the most popular uh, season, I'll call it, out of the show. Okay. Um, and it just gives a great look. Uh, you know, it's uh, alien ship crash lands onto Earth. And uh, humanity's at war at first, and they're like, oh, shit, there's all this technology. Like, there's other beings that could potentially come here. We should all stop fighting and work together. They kind of reverse engineer all that technology. Aliens show up who are humanoid. They're just giants. Uh, You know, they're 50, you know, know, maybe not that tall. They're like 20 meters tall. And so this is America. We speak in feet. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, 20 meters tall in feet. So, <laughs> freedom units. Yeah, please. that's why we talking. <laughs> yeah. Freedom so, units. Uh, yeah, freedom units. <laughs> so, um, the, the main mecha are actually like jet fighters uh-huh. that can transform into robots. And they use those to defend Earth. And it's, it's a good story. It's pretty lighthearted, but there's some serious points. Um, you know, that's a, that's a fantastic one. Uh, on my list. Uh, and then finally, if we're going to get into the super robot genre of shows. Okay. Super robot. I'm talking like ultimate fighting techniques to defeat uh, evil monsters. Okay. Um, the King of Braves, Gao Gaigar, is the name of the show. Okay. And I'll, I'll have it. I'll have it. In I, think, I think you've showed this to me. It's, it's 50 episodes long and it has the best opening ever i almost want to see if i can play it on youtube right now if you send (laughs) send send tushi the link and we'll play it at the end of this episode oh before we sign off oh this sounds great so yeah but yeah uh let's say look look it up and look it up and send it to him like like while you're talking but i think i know what you're i know what you're talking about yeah so um Oh, spell the right. <laughs> Make me climax. There we go. God. There we go. So yeah, it's uh, the this ancient alien comes to Earth and like starts infesting things, and he's trying to gain power to be like basically take over all this stuff. And a giant robotic lion comes to Earth and drops <laughs> off one of our main characters, Mamoru, who is a child, yet but a babe. And then <laughs> he's actually an alien, but he grows up to like, be like, I don't know, eight, ten years old. And these monsters start attacking, and he's like, oh, shit, there's monsters. What do I do? And then there's the elite force known as 3G, who have been planning for this moment because they discovered the lion and reversed its engineered its technology and now it can combine with guy who is the superhuman cyborg <laughs> he then can become uh guy gar and okay. then can combine with all the other super vehicles like a stealth fighter a super speed train and then Sounds uh like something i've watched before a drill tank oh it's so cool drill tanks are like my favorite stupid giant robot vehicle <laughs> it's literally a tank with giant drills on the front of it and it just it just can't go wrong with that <laughs> you, can't. you can't yeah so that that would be my my giant role pick uh for that one it's just it's great action it's got the the budget of a ova so it's got great effects and um but it was long enough to be like a you know fifty episode series, and just action all the time. It's like it is that is probably in my top three. So it's like Gundam, Gal Gygar, and then 
literally everything else. That's the third. third <laughs> everything that else is number three. <laughs> yeah. Does that count? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. That, that so, yeah. so with 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 the few remaining minutes with here, I have one more question for you. Yes. Because I'm su- I'm so surprised you didn't mention this, dude. You are are like the top Transformers fan. Yes. So, so <laughs> where does where, where does that fit in? So okay. So top four <laughs> is 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 in I'm no so order. surprised you didn't start no off order. with that. No, I, I know. I the thing is, I love Transformers and Transformers. We've been talking about very human and yeah. robotic symbiosis versus just robots being. Robots in you disguise, know, yeah. Conscious themselves, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean that that to me the mecha genre is the interaction between humans and machines. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Transformers is technically in that genre, um, but I oh, that's a whole nother show. Okay, <laughs> I, <laughs> right, I will talk man. about Transformers for literally <laughs> an entire day. Yeah. Oh, I guess we have our next topic. <laughs> there we go. Um, all right. The month uh, of next. So we'll we'll go ahead and, and wrap things up, and then uh, uh, well, you know what? We'll leave it at this. Final thoughts, Chris. Final thoughts. Yep. Uh, it the mecha genre is a very niche genre. I will say, you know, it's it's not as popular as some other um, animes or shows in general, but pretty much any any genre you can think of has some type of mecha equivalent. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would give it a go. I mean, like giant robots, maybe aren't some people's things, but you might be able to find a show that has the things you like, and it just happens to have robots. All right. All right, Tucci, you know what to do, man. Play us out with whatever the hell Chris just sent you. (laughs) Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what you just asked me to. I'm just stalling so I can type this out real oh. quick. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah. Have a great night, guys. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, there's a solo. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I seriously love Asian culture so much. <laughs> All right. Is it bad that all I can hear is them saying goo goo gaga, goo goo gaga, goo goo gaga? No, I mean, that, it's like that's Kane kind West of song, right? That's kind of what it is. Sounds with his mouth. <laughs> I mean, it was still a smash hit. People loved it. <laughs> Changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, hey, uh, while this is going on, uh, thanks a lot, to everyone listening. And <laughs> if you'd like to learn more, I mean, I don't know. Google is your friend. Hopefully, Chris gave you some awesome suggestions. Yeah, Joe, I don't know. <laughs> I was, I, I was like, is this, does this play at the beginning of every show, Chris? I mean, this is a great outro song, to be honest. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and he says now. Yeah, he knew it. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and edit that down a little bit for the, uh, the <laughs> actual. Copyright. Yeah, just yeah, just because. So, um, so yeah, uh, make sure to check us out uh, next weekend. One Shot Adventures Guild on Twitch again. That's www.twitch.tv slash tbdpod. Uh, we are starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will go until whenever. Um, so join us then. Um, and we have a couple new commercials. Uh, so... I'm sure you've heard them already at this point, but uh, yeah, we are on a, a 24 hour streaming live public radio uh, website. Um, and, and yeah, so the commercials on here. 
uh, give us, you know, check us out, spread the word, share the link. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. So yeah, fuck it. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> yeah, and if we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you guys. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thanks again. Oh, of course. I didn't realize that show was like, that uh, intro was the OVA one where it's like a million. Yeah, exactly what he says. Not. All right. See you guys. <laughs> Bye. Uh, that racist. Yeah.